Hello everyone, it's Thor, and today we're going to be taking a look at the astrology chart of Camilla, Queen Consort. And I wanted to take a look at the chart, obviously, because King Charles is in the spotlight, and we know the coronation is going to be happening in May of 2023, so not too far off. And also, for the month of November, they're going to be releasing the fifth season of The Crown, and a lot of what we saw in the fourth season of The Crown was the beginning stages of the relationship between Prince Charles and Diana and how Camilla's involved. So I wanted to take a look at, from the perspective of the astrology chart, what kind of information can we gather about, for example, Camilla's first marriage to Andrew Parker Bowles? And also, what kind of information can we get about Camilla's marriage to King Charles at the moment? Um, I know the series was portraying that Camilla was with Andrew Parker Bowles because she was in love with him. Well, we'll see if the chart really supports that. And then also, we'll just take a look at what type of planetary periods Camilla is in at the moment um, and see what could be happening around the, uh, around the time of the coronation. And also, because of uh, Prince Harry's book that's about to be released in January, that book Spare, we also want to see maybe can we glean anything from the chart regarding that issue as well. For those of you that are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and hit the bell for all the notifications of when I release new videos. I've done a lot of videos on the royal family. People are really enjoying them, and I plan to do more. And I think it's going to be quite popular, especially since the coronation is coming up. So I'm planning on doing more uh, charts of uh, members of the royal family. And I have a playlist for those of you that are enjoying that. If you're interested in your own reading, please check below for details on that. So let's go ahead and we're going to take a look at the chart of Camilla. And we're going to point out a few things that we might see in the chart. All right, there's the chart. The first thing that we notice is Camilla is a Cancer Ascendant. And the moon is in the sign of Gemini. So those are usually the first things we look at when we see a chart. Cancer people tend to be very emotionally driven, very sensitive type of people, very security and family focused type of people that's all going to be represented by the sign of cancer she also has a rising nakshatra called pushya and if those of you that remember vedic astrology there's 27 nakshatras that span the 12 signs of the zodiac and so there's about two and a half nakshatras that that span every uh every rashi or sign so Camilla's Pushya, and Pushya tend to be very, uh, it's actually one of the most auspicious nakshatras. It, they tend to be very religious people or spiritual people, and their Shakti is the, uh, the ability to generate spiritual energy. And believe it or not, when I look at Camilla's chart, you know, despite all the controversy that has happened in the past, I see a tremendously spiritual person, which is kind of interesting there. She's got the moon in the 12th house. This can indicate psychic ability. And it can even indicate somebody who's very focused on the spiritual realm. Somebody who likes being very private. So life inside of a castle would be very much enjoyed by somebody that has moon in the 12th house. It's somebody who doesn't like to be in the public eye. So this whole idea of um, being in the public eye especially now that she's queen consort is probably a difficult type of it's difficult <laughs> being in the spotlight. And so she's probably not going to talk a lot about her private life and interviews and so forth because of moon being in the 12th house. Let me clean the chart up a little bit there. The other thing I like to notice is Saturn is in the first house of cancer here. And when Saturn is in the first house, it can produce world leaders. A lot of presidents and prime ministers have Saturn in the first house because it does give somebody a, a rather thick skin and they have the endurance to be able to run political campaigns, 
or be able to handle a lot of the social criticism that become you know that comes with being a leader so the downside about saturn being in the first house and we might talk about this for a moment is there can be health issues because saturn represents heavy karma in our chart and your first house literally represents your body you know your your physical apparatus and how that uh you know, and the appearance thereof and how it operates. So when Saturn's there, it can show some strain on the body. But Saturn in the first house can also extend somebody's life in certain ways because uh, Saturn delays things. You also got Sun in the first house. So it's interesting. There's these two planets that are very diametrically opposed to each other in the first house. The Sun and Saturn are dire enemies. So uh, sun in the first house is going to give somebody a very bright aura, enthusiastic, charming, smiling type of person, a very radiant type of personality. But Saturn is there suppressing it. So I do feel like throughout the lifetime, when Saturn's with sun in the chart, it can show somebody that they have faced a lot of invalidation or criticism throughout their life because the sun represents the ego. And then Saturn represents a suppressive influence. So this reminds me a lot of, or this reminds me quite a bit of when in the 90s, the whole scandal was going on with uh, Charles leaving Diana. And then Camilla was really much in the, very much in the spotlight at the time. And I remember there was a lot of criticism there because people loved Diana. So definitely the Saturn in the first house helped because she had a thick skin to be able to endure a lot of the criticism. But nonetheless, you know, it can be damaging on the ego, on the mindset. Let's go back to the chart here. And let me clean that up. The other thing we can point out about this chart is uh, Jupiter in the fourth house can show somebody that they enjoy being at home. They enjoy, uh, they have many residences. Because uh, wherever Jupiter is in the chart, it's a multiplier. So lots of properties. And that's pretty much obvious by now, isn't it? <laughs> Let's also take a look at where Rahu and K2 are in Camilla's chart. Rahu's in the 11th house, which shows a passion for prizes. Um, it can show somebody who's driven for profits and money and so forth. But mainly it's recognition. 11th house is a lot about recognition and goals so a lot of times money comes with that sort of thing um, and also there's a desire to be connected to important friendship networks that's what that represents uh k2 in the fifth house this can show a little bit of disconnection with celebrity like she doesn't really want to be a celebrity we already kind of intuited that right with moon being in the 12th somebody who likes to pri be private but K2 in the fifth house can also show a detachment towards children. Now, I don't know what the relationship is with Camilla and her children, but it can show a certain amount of, um, you know, there's been quite a few lifetimes there because K2 represents past lives where, you know, she's probably been a mother quite often in past lives. That's what it indicates because K2 represents where we were in the past. Not saying she's a bad mother, though. All right, let me clean up the chart here. The other thing I want to take a look at, those are a few things we noticed with Camilla's chart. Now I want to take a look at how the first marriage with Andrew Parker Bowles was, and was the crown really accurately portraying how that marriage actually went? Because the crown portrayed that there was this, that Camilla was with Andrew because she was in love with him. And she was kind of halfway with Charles. And um, anyways, that was the idea I got through watching The Crown. So she kept on telling people on the phone that she was in love with Andrew. Okay, so let's take a look. Was she really in love with Andrew? So the first marriage is going to be represented by the seventh house. But really what I want to look at with the first marriage with Andrew Parker Bowles is going to be, we're going to look at from the moon. So if we count seven houses from the moon, this is where we get the emotional impact of marriage. And from 
most people's point of view, the social material point of view is not really important. What's mostly important is your experience with that spouse or that romantic partner. What is your personal private experience with that person? Not what how society judges it. Seventh house is more how society judges it. This is going to be how does Camilla actually perceive the marriage on an emotional level. So we see that it's in the sixth house. Seven houses for moon is representative of the sixth house. Sixth house represents imbalance. So a lot of times I see people that have their first marriage is, uh, you know, six from moon is, or sorry, is going to be six houses. Uh, the sixth house is a, a marriage that was really imbalanced in some ways. And a lot of people might not understand that. It was already imbalanced with or without Charles. The karma there was an imbalanced relationship. So sometimes when you see uh, the sixth house being represented from seven houses from moon, it can represent a relationship that may have addiction in it, uh, lots of disagreement, disharmony, cheating is, is very much a hallmark. Now the cheating in the marriage can be both the natives chart and the spouse of the native. So it, it can be both. And there's also a lot of accusation and blame within the marriage. Also, a lot of times what I see with this is there's a guilt bond that's holding the couple together. So they're staying together out of guilt. So there's some sort of obligation there. Now, we can get some idea of what's going on with the D1 chart here. One thing you'll notice is Saturn is aspecting the seventh house. So this shows there was a lot of social pressure to be married. And I don't know if uh, Camilla's family or the family of Andrew Parker Bowles, were they very much pressuring this union? Uh, when Saturn's aspect in the seventh house, it can show there was definitely outside pressure to get married. And that's what really was going on. You know, I find it a little bit, um, even though there was some romance in the marriage, when we look at um, the, the moon and the sixth house there, and Venus is aspecting, it does show there was some romance in the marriage, but there was considerable disagreement and disharmony there, disharmony. So I don't necessarily feel that it was the best situation. Obviously, she wouldn't have been still seeing Charles if she was so madly in love with Andrew. So I would say there was a lot of disagreement. A lot of times the marriages that have are represented by the sixth house, um, usually they, they end up they end up in divorce. It's almost guaranteed at some point because there's so much loss of energy in the relationship that just to find balance, the relationship usually has to end in some sort of divorce scenario. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the marriage with King Charles. And in a birth chart, of course, we can look at that as well. So let me move something over here for so I can look at. Um, now, the marriage with Charles is going to be social, social material wise, it's going to be represented by the second house of Leo. So this is going to be how the world sees the marriage. And what's interesting, there's no planets there and there's not really any negative aspects happening there. So that's good. And but what's really funny is, look, the sign of Leo. So it's being seen as the sign of Leo, obviously royalty. So there isn't a whole lot of negative judgment about the marriage itself. Maybe what, while the affair was going on, there was quite a bit of public criticism. But now that they're married, there doesn't seem to be quite a lot of criticism. Um, now we're going to take a look at the emotional uh, aspect of the marriage. So remember I was telling you the first marriage would be if you look seven houses from moon. Okay, that would be the first marriage, the emotional aspect of it. Well, then if you're, there's another marriage, what you want to do is I'm going to clean this up for a second, is you take this as the first marriage, and then you count eight houses, eight houses from the sixth house. And why, why you do eight houses is because eight houses, uh, it represents the death of an old relationship and the birth of a new one. Remember, the eighth house is the house of death and then rebirth. So 
you're rebirthed into a new marriage uh, agreement. You literally become a new person with new karma in Vedic astrology when you get married a second time or a third time. And if there was a third marriage, we would count again, but I'm not looking at that. But you would count eight houses from that one. So there's always these transformation points. So in Vedic astrology, they almost look at a marriage as its own separate living being where you're looking at the karma of that marriage. If I had the time and the birth date, I actually could do a chart on the marriage uh, when the marriage was actually formed. So that's the type of things you can do with astrology. So from the emotional point of view, this marriage, believe it or not, it's more representative of who Camilla really is because it's the first house. Okay. So this really is more congruent with who Camilla sees as herself. And she really feels that Charles is a champion for her. And so I feel like with uh, the former marriage with Andrew, the feeling wasn't there. There was a feeling of disagreement and probably a lot of hostility with the sixth house. And by the way, these are all alleged, alleged statements based on my interpretation of Vedic astrology. But if we look at the perspective of the second marriage, it's a lot better. Now, the downside about it, even though it's representative of the first house, which is the self, there's a feeling of it feels a lot more energetic. It feels a lot more uh, aligned with one's genuine soul personality. But the downside is you got Saturn there. Now, Saturn provides a lot of endurance. So it's not all bad, but there's this heavy feeling of responsibility that coats the marriage. And probably, obviously, this is going to come through royal duties, which she's going to get more of these royal duties with uh, King Charles now that he's on the throne. Sun is there. So this represents, you know, it really does show this was a karmic destiny sort of thing. This really was, you know, especially with Saturn being there, you know, representative of the second marriage. There's this idea of karmic destiny that this was meant to happen in one way or another. You know, a lot of times in uh, I try to explain this to clients, but, you know, a lot of people think of having one soulmate. Well, you know, in your chart, you may have more than one soulmate. And with every person that you're, you know, in a long-term relationship, there's some sort of lesson or karma that you need to fulfill. And once that lesson or karma is fulfilled with person one, then it's time to go on to person two and so on, as long as the soul has signed up for certain lessons and certain experiences. Because every marriage actually represents a degree of soul growth. I want you to be aware of that. So the marriage definitely has a heavy sense of responsibility, but it's more representative of who Camilla really is. Okay, so if we look at the current planetary period, it's really interesting. Remember on October 25th, we had the uh, lunar eclipse, sorry, solar eclipse in the sign of Libra. And then on November 8th, 2022, I know some of you are probably watching this video after the fact, we have the lunar eclipse there in the 10th house. Well, you know, the eclipse season's already showing that Camilla is very much in the spotlight. So that's going to continue for the next year because Rahu's transiting the 10th house of Aries until October of 2023. So still very much in the public eye, even though she feels a mega uncomfortable with Moon being in the 12th house. Isn't a lot of comfortability, but she will do it because... Saturn is in the first. She'll do her duty. She'll do what she's told to do, but she doesn't like it on an emotional level. The other thing I wanted to point at, point, uh, point at is transiting Saturn has been in the seventh house of Capricorn. It's about to change signs, and this is going to be affecting all of you, by the way, not just Camilla. It's going to be going into the eighth house on January 17th of 2023. And then it's going to be there till March of 2025. So you notice there's going to be a really big change of karma. And I was actually pondering this because I'm all of us are going to be going through a karmic change. But it's going to be in Camilla's eighth house. And Saturn is the eighth house ruler. It's interesting that book, Prince Harry's book, is going to be released in January. I forget if it was January 10th, somewhere around that time. 
In January 17th is when Saturn changed signs. Usually right around the week that Saturn change, changes signs, that's when you notice a lot of stuff happening. Well, check this out. Saturn is going to be in the 8th house. And this is kind of like a damage control. It, and this is from the perspective of Camilla, okay? I think there's going to be a lot of stuff in this book. By the way, in the Navumsa chart, Saturn's going to be in the 5th house. 5th house represents things like books. Rahu's there, so this could be very um, taboo or very very uh, taboo or subjects you don't talk about are going to be in that book. Or some alleged statements. Even lies might be in that book. Rahu means deception. There could be a lot of uh, lies or things that are not simply not true in that book, by the way. Not saying Prince Harry's trying to lie, but we don't know who's involved in fully releasing the book. Um, but Saturn in the eighth house is kind of like preventing, it's like doing triage, because eighth house is all about like sudden events, very explosive type of events. And there needs to be this damage control mode that's brought in. But what Saturn in the eighth house does, Saturn's actually very successful at preventing a lot of fallout. Saturn's like going to be maintaining the damage control. Saturn's really good at it. So I do feel like the, the royal family, they have a plan for whatever's going on with uh, Prince Harry's book. There's a strong plan there. And this thing is going, the fallout is going to be suppressed uh, very very well it's it's like they've they've known and, and i think they're experts at it i mean i was watching the crown and they're really good at managing situations and they probably are even better as time goes on but also besides prince harry's book what i feel like is and i said this in rishi sunak's chart i feel like the western world and this is kind of like i'm bringing in the world predictions in the camilla's reading but I feel like there's going to be a crisis of some sort that's impacting the world over the next few months. This could also represent a world in crisis, you know, and obviously Camilla is going to be very much involved. She's wife of the king, our queen consort. So definitely there's this idea of trying to manage uh, the nation or trying to manage the country, trying to, um, and I know technically they don't, I know technically they don't govern the United Kingdom, but I, you know, they're trying to lend their support or they're trying to do their best to calm everyone down during this period of upheaval because the eighth house re really represents tremendous amount of upheaval. Now, with all that going on, all the said upheaval I'm talking about in the release of uh, Harry's book, I do feel like. Uh, this is going to be handled quite well by Camilla. She's got Saturn there. She can ride through the storm. She's going to be able to ride through the storm. Also, if we notice what uh, Bukti uh, Camilla is in, she's going to be in, she's in Jupiter Bukti at the moment. And she's in Venus Mahadasha. Venus Mahadasha is a lot about family, uh, being in love, romance, contracts. So this is a pretty happy time of her life. The previous Mahadasha was K2, and that's a really difficult time. But this is a relatively happy time. She's in a Jupiter period. One of the things I was talking about with Saturn in the first house is there could be health issues. So health issues could be coming up to the forefront from now until about July of 2023. Camilla's got to watch the health because of the sixth house that's being activated by Jupiter down here. So that's one, one idea. But if she's in good health, nothing to worry about. Um, and then in summer of next year, she's going to enter Saturn boot D, and that's going to be a little bit different of story. There's going to be a lot of seriousness. A lot of people have talked about, and I know the news has talked about this, that they do feel like there's going to be like a really big recession in 2023. And this could be just causing a lot of chaos. So there's this idea of really heavy responsibility in summer of 2023. And really, but she's got the chart where she can handle this. So I do feel like she's going to be a good, um, a good spouse for King Charles because she's really thick skinned. She can handle these kind of situations. But I do see some sort of crisis coming, and I do feel like Prince Harry's book might be just a small thing compared to everything that's going to be coming up. 
but she's going to be very stoic. So you might not see privately. It does impact Camilla quite a bit. All the things that are going on, but private, you know, stoically to the public, but she's got a very sensitive heart inside. Okay. That's what the chart shows. Thank you guys for being here and watching this chart reading. We just went over a few things and a few ideas. Let me know what you think about uh, the chart reading and also about Camilla and King Charles. Comment down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.